Arts. The Presentation Sisters have a long history in South Dakota with ministries dedicated to education and healing. The sisters founded schools and hospitals around the state, including Presentation College in Aberdeen and St. Luke's Hospital, which is now a part of Avera Health System. Last Wednesday, I spoke with two Presentation Sisters leaders, Sister Joanne Sturzel, whose health care ministry includes serving as head nurse at St. Luke's and McKinnon Hospital, and Sister Lois Ann Sargent, who taught at schools around the state and served as archivist. Sister Lois Ann said the first Presentation Sisters arrived in 1880. There were five sisters from Ireland, and two postulants came. They landed in New York on their way to the Dakota Territory to teach Indian children, which they did for the first couple of years. They were invited by Bishop Martin Marty, of the bishop of the territory then. They worked in Charles Mix County. And then in 1881, just a year later, they were advised to move on because the weather was so severe, their little sod home uh, sort of melted away, so they moved on to Deadwood. And then, after thinking about returning to Ireland... Uh, someone advised them or urged them to stay, so they went to Fargo. They were invited to open a school in Fargo. And when did they uh, arrive in Aberdeen? And then in 1886, October, Father Robert Hare invited the sisters to come and open a school. And it's true, Bishop Martin Marty was the bishop at the time, and he approved of it, of course. So the first couple of years, they taught in the Sacred Heart Parish church, and they lived in Father Hare's rectory. And then in 18, by 1888, a new school was built, and their enrollment increased, and new members began to come. The first American candidate came in 1894, and the first South Dakotan came in 1899 from Elkton. Her name was Sister Frances Holland. And so they worked in uh, education, and in 1900, a severe diphtheria epidemic occurred in the area, and the doctors urged or invited the sisters to assist and help. And so health ministry began. And in 1900, uh, they built that first hospital here, St. Luke's in Aberdeen. And since those early days, uh, it's been education and uh, healing, the the two main ministries of the Presentation Sisters? Right, up until recent years. So, yes, health care and education. Schools have sprung up all over the state. Uh, Bridgewater, Del Rapids, Woonsocket, Bristol. Uh, The pastors in all these little parishes wanted a school. And so the sisters uh, spread out and taught in the various areas. Is the main idea, and even back then, that uh, for, the, for the Presentation Sisters to, to go where they were and uh, are needed? That's right. That's right. It's in our mission statement that we will go anywhere we're invited or where there is a need. And we especially take care of the poor. That's what Nan O'Neill, our founders in Ireland, to go where the needs are and she started out with the needs of the poor in Ireland. At that time, they were very poor. Then, of course, when we were invited to come to South Dakota, there, there were great needs for education and to educate in the faith. And so that's why there were so many schools. And then um, eventually, um, the needs have changed so much, especially in the last 50 years. So we, we're... The way that we minister in our both the healing and teaching ministry has changed significantly, plus we've added other ministries that directly meet the needs of our times. Well, Sister Joanne, how have uh, things changed? Uh, you mentioned change. How, what, what, in, what in particular has changed in the past uh, 50 years or so? Well, um, our society has changed significantly, and um, it's It has happened over the last maybe 30 years that gradually um, sisters felt called and our community felt called to serve the poor, and it probably started, oh, in the 60s and 70s, where there were more um, immigrants coming into our country and there were more poor people in inner cities and their needs weren't being met by the people there, and so... 
and a number of sisters uh, learned the Spanish language and the culture of the Spanish people and started outreach to the immigrants, particularly the Latino immigrants. And then there were some years, too, where sisters were ministering with the black community. And um, about 10 years ago, our community started uh, um, an organized outreach to the Latino immigrants in Sioux Falls. It's called Caminando Juntos, Walking With is what it's about, and helping people to find the resources they need and doing translations. And one of the sisters is trained in uh, naturalization services can help people get their citizenship papers and things like that. Well, it sounds to me like the, the presentation sisters are, have always and continue to adapt to to the changes as, as in the community, especially as they see that the, the, the needs are different. That's right. You know, we're followers of Jesus, and that's what Jesus did. He met people right where they were and listened to them and called them forth to be more. And um, in our day, the, these needs are calling out to us. And um, the same thing with the health care. Um, we've had significant changes in our health care. About 10 years ago, we started the sponsorship with the Benedictine Sisters, and a, a big change in our health care is our partnership. In fact, in all of our ministries, we, we conscientiously partner with people, other people, and um, there, too, we try to create an environment where people can use their riches of their person and their qualities and join us in our ministries and also in our prayer. And, um, well, we just keep listening to where God is calling us, and it keeps growing. You mentioned uh, the the changes in the hospital and uh, the, the Benedictine Sisters and the Presentation Sisters uh, and the sponsorship of the the Avera Health System. What what does it mean to be a, a, a sponsor of uh, the Avera Health System? Well, um, it means that their so our health system is um, under the uh, arms, I guess you'd say, of the presentation and Benedictine sisters and um, we have uh, a structure so that um, we aren't as intimately involved with the total government as we used to be our main thing is that our our mission and our values get carried out and we have programs so that that happens so like we have um, a leadership a lot of leadership training for our managers and we have some for our physicians now and we're finding that that's what the people that come to partner with us in our ministry they are really become engaged in that and um, they work together and we try to invite them to live our mission and our values and like I say we have structured ways to do that. You mentioned the Benedictine sisters um uh, Sister Lois and uh, Sergeant, uh, what is the difference between the Benedictine Sisters and the Presentation Sisters? Uh, I understand that uh, the, the two orders arrived uh, in South Dakota about, at about the same time? About the same time, yes. And it, it means that uh, we collaborate with one another, and the Benedictines are basically a monastic community. That means they have certain guidelines and uh, rules that they follow, which are a little bit different from presentation uh, sisters. We are an apostolic community, which means we go out and we work with the poor and the needy, uh, whereas the Benedictines tend to live in community, either in Yankton or in their smaller uh, congregation gatherings. Uh, but they're, they're monastic while we are apostolic. That would be the main uh, difference, I guess. Back to education just a little bit. Uh, we sponsor Presentation College here in Aberdeen, too, which is now kind of on the growing uh, edge. We've added new programs which entice students to come, mainly football and the sports. They also learn the basic uh, you know, needs of life. Whatever's taught in colleges these days, we have. 
what is the the current relationship with uh, the Presentation Sisters and Presentation College in uh, Aberdeen? Well, well, again, we sponsor them. They're sort of, as Sister Joanne explained, they're under our arm. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, we sponsor them. Uh, we don't have as many teachers in the college as we once had, but we hope and we uh, train them to carry out the ministry and the uh, charism of NANO in their work and transfer it to their students in the classroom. So we're hoping that our mission and our charism is being, you know, learned and carried out in public and in lifelong uh, work areas. You, you've mentioned your, your founder, Nano Nagel, a couple of times, and you've used the, the word charism. Um, how, how important is the, the legacy of Nano Nagel to the Presentation Sisters? And maybe you can even talk about what, what the word charism means. Well, it's our, it's, it's our statement. Uh, if I could, I could just read briefly a part of that statement. Yes. And it is that we are called by God, whose love empowers us to respond as a faith community. We are consecrated by God and inspired by the love and zeal of Nano Nagel. We live together, um, the evangelical councils, and share in God's mission especially among the poor. And that's just a portion of the charism. There's another little paragraph. We also have a mission statement, which says that we are inspired by our foundress, Nano Nago. We are willing to go forth to any part of the world to work for justice, alleviate oppression, and promote human dignity, especially among the poor. We proclaim the good news with missionary zeal, in a spirit of love and joy. And that's kind of our motto, in joyful service. So we try to go out, do our work cheerfully, graciously, uh, and wholeheartedly. You mentioned uh, peace and justice, and uh, Sister Joanne, I know this is something that you've been involved with all over the years. Yes. <laughs> One of our statements at our last um, planning meeting in our congregation was, Justice is our work, and um, we do that in various ways. Um, some of it has to do with having influence in our state legislature and in Congress for things like justice for immigrants, health care for everybody, environmental issues. Some of us belong to peace groups where we, as a group, um, take action for some of these um, issues. And so in all of our ministries, we try to keep that in mind that we can do that direct ministry to people, but then we also would like to be involved in changing in what we call systemic change so that we can change the systems that are causing things like so many people to be poor. In our health uh, system, too, um, that's one of the things that is common with both the Benedictines and presentations is that we have a great desire to, to keep health care in the rural areas, and that's the justice issue, too, in care of the elderly. Well, Sister Joanne, going back to uh, your beginnings with the Presentation Sisters, what made you want to uh, join the Presentation Sisters? Well... When I graduated from high school, I went to nursing school at McKinnon Hospital. And um, there were, when I was with the Presentation Sisters, I could see that they had um, a focus in their lives. And it was what spoke to me the most was this desire to serve people through belonging to a group that was committed to that. And so um, I didn't know that, you know, what I the whole totality of what I was getting into, but it was just the right fit for me because I wanted to serve other people, and I really like the focus on following Jesus. And Sister Lois Ann, the, the same question uh, for you. Uh, what was uh, your interest in, in joining the Sisters? I believe you've been, you joined in what, 1951? Uh, I did, yes, and it might be similar to, to Sister Joanne's. I grew up in a rural, rural area in southwestern South Dakota, 
I uh, went to school, high school, to the sisters in Notre Dame and Mitchell, and I just had kind of the urge to, we say, answer the call, because it is a gift from God, our vocation, and so when we kind of have this urge, if we listen and respond, then we come to the convent, and that's sort of how I got here after after one year of college. Um, I decided that it was time to try to join the Presentation Sisters and to see how they lived and worked. And again, I was inspired by their generosity to the poor, to the common folk, and to and their devotion to God. And so I have never regretted my decision. I celebrated my 60th um, anniversary as a Presentation Sister last summer. So it has been uh, a wonderful journey, and I've not regretted it. I've not uh, faltered in it. So I will continue to remain in joyful service as a Presentation Sister. And your service has mostly been in education? It was in education, yes, for many years. And then in 1990, I had the opportunity to come to Aberdeen. I was invited to be the archivist, and I have done that work uh, ever since, and I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot about the community, uh, our uh, health system, our education system, and it has been a joy to uh, um, work with the history and, and preserve it for future generations. And Sister Joanne, you've been uh, your service has has been in in the healing ministry part of the Presentation Sisters. Is that correct? Yes, it has. And also, I've done pastoral care in parishes. But for the last twenty five years, I've been doing what is so true to who I am, and that's I'm involved in a personal growth program called the PRH Growth Program. And it um, I give workshops and accompany people so they can find out who they are deep down and live with more inner peace and joy and meaning in their lives. And I find that in our world today that a lot of people are seeking that. Sometimes life gets so stressed and people start asking questions, well, what is this all about? And when they can really discover deep down who they are and what they're created for, their life changes and they have meaning and a deepened spirituality, so um, I just love doing it. I see the I see the beauty. I get to see the beauty in person. Looking back over the the history, over a century of history of the Presentation Sisters in South Dakota, uh, uh, Sister Lois, and what do you think the impact ha- has been on the state and the region, and even even the world? Uh, well. Um, I don't know what the greatest impact would be, but I know we've touched many lives. Uh, we know many people. We've gone to, to all parts of the world for workshops and leadership uh, conferences. You know, they just, we've touched so many lives, both in education, healing, uh, even politically, I would say. The sisters have gone to peer to uh, work with legislators. Uh, we work with the community here in Aberdeen, Sioux Falls. Uh, we're on committees, and we work with the, any program that involves people, the poor, housing, uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we've just, you know, we've worked with the community. We try to touch lives, um, inspire others. Uh, I think it's just been a great impact, and, and people look up to us for leadership, I think, very often, because we do serve on committees, uh, even as chairpersons. So we have touched, I would say, thousands of lives in our, in our work, in our ministries. Mm-hmm. I agree. And we've had uh, sisters in, in uh, mission in Mexico and Latin America for a number of years, and when those sisters are there in those missions, the train people and educate the local people to take over the mission and then they move on and so um, that's one of the elements I've found in all of our ministries is the education piece. Well, How, how do you uh, see the, the, the future uh, of the Presentation Sisters? 
the work the work continues well, just in new new areas that uh as as we mentioned before going where you're needed yes i think we will continue to work in our ministries now it's true our numbers are fewer we have more elder sisters so we don't have as many and we don't have as many young members but um you know we've trained others to do the work that we began i guess and so our lives, our work, you know, will continue. That's Sister Lois Ann Sargent of the Presentation Sisters, and we also spoke with Sister Joanne Sturzel about the 130 years of ministry of the Presentation Sisters in South Dakota. That interview is the first of a week-long series of interviews with women who have made a difference in the state. The interviews are in connection with the PBS television documentary airing in February called Makers, about women who have helped shape the nation. And coming up tomorrow on Dakota Med Day on our local Makers series, we'll talk with radio and television broadcaster Sylvia Hinken.